Hi, it's uh, Chris Bottrell here from Chris Bottrell Productions. I'm doing a, a follow-on video tutorial on raw video processing. Now, it doesn't matter if this footage is from Canon 5D Mark II, uh, 5D Mark III, or uh, even from a, a, a Red Cam or the Blackmagic Cinema Camera. It's it's all the same. So. My first uh, tutorial uh, that I did, I, was, I showed you how to use the Lightroom um, workflow. Now, this tutorial um, is going to be uh, using Adobe After Effects, um, and I will do another one um, fairly soon covering uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, all of these methods have their um, advantages and also their disadvantages. One thing that I forgot to mention in uh, the previous tutorial uh, with the Lightroom way is that you can actually upscale um, your footage to whatever you want really. Um, you know, because you're working natively with uh, DNG files, you can actually output them, you know, at 4K. It's not ideal, it's, you know, it is still best to capture your, your footage in 4K, but, you know, if your camera has an uh, account actually record in 4K, you can output in 4K um, with a little bit of sharpening, you can actually make it look pretty darn good. So without further ado, um, in uh, After Effects, if we just hit Composition, New Composition, and I'm choosing uh, 1080p on there, press OK. And one very important thing that a lot of people don't do is you actually need to change uh, your bits per channel um, from 8 to 16. I mean, you can use 32 if you want, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit overkill. So now that we've got um, a correct timeline with the correct bits per channel in it, we can import our raw footage. So let's have a look. Got some. This is some footage uh, that I shot recently um, for a, a, an upcoming film that I'm currently making. Actually, that was the wrong footage. Uh, I'm making a um, a comedy, a zombie comedy that's based in my local city. Um, should be quite good fun. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. This is the right folder. Here we go. So here is my uh, my friend Craig um, up on the hilltop. He's uh, he's one of our one of our zombie uh, actors. Now, when you go to import your your footage into um, into After Effects, it will come up with the uh, with this window, which is the Adobe um, Camera Raw um, processing window that comes up. The same in Photoshop and uh, some of our older Adobe uh, programs. Now you have all of the control here that you have in Lightroom um, and you can actually use Lightroom presets and make them work in After Effects. Um, but what I what I tend to do is I, I do have some 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 presets. I have my flat preset, which is it's more like um, the the cine style um, setting that that you used to use on the uh, on the five D Mark Twos, um, which gives you sort of a, a, a goodish starting point for you know doing your your, your color your color grading or color correction. Um, I also um, have a few of my own ones that I've saved, like uh, like Zombie, for instance. Um, which is a lot darker. I'll change the white balance to to what it's supposed to be, um, and then you've got another one that I downloaded off off someone, which was uh, called Gritty. But I don't overly like that that one sort of too much. So what what I what I tend to do is I I go and use my um, use my flat. But if I just reset everything on this. Uh, I can't remember which one it was in now. I know it was down in the menu. Okay, this is this is default. This is what um what the the footage come in like. So just go and 
set everything um, and then I'll go and apply my uh, my flat preset so you can see everything is is pretty flat um, I may want to just uh, put a little bit more exposure in there um, and and also you know if, if, if you really want you can um, you can mess around with noise reduction if you have got any noisy images so if you press OK that will import your sequence um, into After Effects. Now it does default at 30 frames a second and um, yeah, over here in the UK we use 25 so if you right click and go to interpret footage and main you can change it there to 25 quite easily. Uh, drag down to your timeline and there is your footage. Now the one of the, the downsides of um, of grading and editing in After Effects is the fact that your footage will um, come out quite slow. Um, you know, if you go down to sort of like half res, um, an adaptive resolution, if you do a RAM preview, as you can see, it it is painfully slow to work with. So what I tend to do is I work with um, work with proxies so what I'll do is just for just for this uh, tutorial I'll cut this down to five seconds so we're not sort of like you know sat there for for ages uh, waiting for things to render so what I do is if you right click on your uh, DNG sequence and and then you can go and set proxy oops Actually, no, it's not set proxy. Tell a lie. It is create proxy. Now we want to create uh, a movie proxy, and in the settings, I like to go to a quick time, and I like to change the format to uh, where is it? It's one of the JPEGs. Um, photo JPEG. There we go and bring the quality down to sort of like 60 or so because you, you don't really need it particularly high and then go and hit render. Um, now this is, what is it, I said about five seconds. It will probably take a little bit of time to, to render out but the the benefits of you know working with proxies is, um, is huge, absolutely huge. So whilst this is um, this is rendering out. I'll quickly tell you about this project that we're working on. Um, we're, we're, we're making um, a 90 minute feature film. It's going to be shot in Norwich, um, exclusively shot on a pair of Canon 5D Mark III's with the, the raw video um, enabled. So everything's going to be shot in raw. It's all going to be shot in, in standard 2K um, and we will be upscaling it to 4K because it is um, going to be eventually uh, shown in cinemas. Now the the film is um, a non-profit uh, making film. All of the money that's generated from it is going um, to a local charity. Uh, if you want to check out the uh, the project, you if you go onto Facebook and search in the Norwich Zombie Project, you will find um, our Facebook page. Or alternatively, you can go onto our website, which is www the Norwich Zombie Project .co .uk, um, and you can read up all about us and you know follow our um, our blog, see what we've been up to. We'll be sharing all of our special effects techniques, um, lots of you know like weapons being made by our um, special effects guy Craig, um, and you'll be sharing things like sound recording, you know, just anything really to do with with making films. Uh, and the the charity that we're we're donating to is a local charity called Each, which is a, uh, a children's hospice, and we're really hoping to to raise estimated sort of like fifty thousand um, for the hospice. So that would be pretty cool. We're starting um, our big first scene in our local mall within um, within the next sort of six weeks got our nice big army of makeup artists um, that are going to be helping us out. But anyway, enough of that. Back to this. Okay, so our um, low-resolution proxy has actually just finished rendering. 
it took about three minutes, which for a five second clip is bloody ridiculous. Um, it is very, very slow um, compared to what DaVinci Resolve can do. Okay, so now you've got your, your proxy. Um, if you click on this little button here, you can toggle between the two. So the original, um, well, the original whole file was 1.2 gigabytes, but obviously I, I cut it down to five seconds. Um, and if you click on it, you can see it's now a 13 megabyte QuickTime file. Now, now this is selected. If you scrub through it, as you can see, I'm getting near enough real time on this. Um, but if you just do a quick RAM preview and let it render, you can you can get it in uh, in real time. Now, options for color correcting um, the footage now is you can um, you can use the standard um, After Effects color correction. So you can use all of these. Um, you know, curves is quite quite popular. You can use the hue saturation, um, and then there are things like um, oh god, where's it gone? Ah, yeah, magic bullet. You can use um, colorista. Um, you can use um, magic bullet looks. So you don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with looks but you've got if you go into your looks library you've got all of these different ones but to be fair I think that they're they're a little bit too much um, in my opinion I don't don't really like them and then you've got color finesse as well which is uh, another I'm not sure if I've got it on here um, color finesse 2 oh no color finesse 3 there we go Let's just get rid of our magic bullet looks. Um, and you, you know, load up the interface, and you've got your standard um, freeway color corrector for your um, for your primaries and your masters. In there, it's it's a very good tool. You know, you, you've got your scopes. It's it's not as good as DaVinci, but it's it's still pretty cool. Let's get rid of that. And the final way that you can do it is um, is using lookup tables. Now you've got um, Magic Bullet has one called Luck Buddy, and Adobe has its own, which is um, which is its own built-in utility. Um, and I I have got a library of LUTs. Um, now theoretically, these ones here should actually work. Um, they for some reason they don't always work. Um, I've got you know a, a selection of um, of LUTs here that are. Emulating, you know, um, Fuji camera stocks, um, film stocks, Kodak. You you can you know you you can use basically whatever you want. Lots of, of the pretty easy to find online. Now I will be putting um, a link in the description to my. Um, oh, we can hear my chair there. Need to get a new one. Um, I'll be putting links on on the description so you actually can download all of these um, from my website. They're free. Um, I don't charge for anything. I'd like to like to share everything with people. Um, once you get onto my website, um, you'll 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 get to a page with with a, another link. Um, now there will be um, it is an AdFly link, which basically means that when you click on it, you'll have an advertisement come up for five seconds. And once the advertisement's gone, up in the top right hand side, you just click click continue and it will take you to the to the download section now the reason we do that is because um you know i'm not going to lie we do get paid for that it's uh, a ridiculously low amount of money of um something like four dollars per a thousand clicks um but all, all this money is going towards um the budget of our film and, and the charity so um you know please download them um and and that is pretty much it really for 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 after effects um you know, we, we as I say, that there are quite a few different ways of, of colour correcting your footage or just using a, um, a LUT or a lookup table as they're known, um, which you which you can download off the website. Well, I hope that you, you found this um, semi-useful. Um, this is just obviously, you know, my uh, way of, um, of, of dealing with this footage when I'm working in After Effects. And... I will see you fairly soon um, when I'm going to be covering the uh, DaVinci Resolve way of doing it. Um, and as I say, with the DaVinci Resolve way, the encoding is a lot quicker. 
um, obviously you're lacking certain tools and things that you um, that you have in After Effects. Oh, um, and very very quickly uh, before I do go, is if you want to motion track any of this footage in uh, Mocha for AE. Um, now where was it? I cannot ever remember. Hey, there we go. Tracking Mocha AE. It won't let you. Um, it will either crash or um, when it does open, there we go, it crashes. Every single time it will do that. It doesn't like raw footage um, and it also doesn't overly like the proxies either. So I'll just show you that again. Also, or, or what it will do is when it does open up, it will show that there's zero frames in the in the sequence. So what you need to do is you need to go back to your original footage and then you need to re-render re that into you know, H.264 or, you know, some sort of uh, compressed format that isn't particularly huge. Um, and Mocha will, will read it perfectly. Um, now, this scene here, if you want to see the a finished version of it, I will just um, find it for you. So you can see what we've been up to. Uh, there we go. This is my uh, my Kodak emulator. So a little bit of drizzle there, a little bit of Iron Man freestyle, um, sort of like I don't know face glow you want to call it. Yeah, nice. Won't show you any more. So um, I hope you found this uh, tutorial um, helpful and I will see you soon.